Hello and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jose Laporte. I'm blessed to be back with you again to talk about the Bible, to share what the Lord has given me, and for us to rejoice together over his word, the fruit of his word, the awesomeness of his word, to grow in our understanding, to better glorify and serve him. The Lord put a word in my heart. Just uh, this past week, I was watching some videos of famous preachers, famous teachers, people with these huge and giant followings, these people that they preach this disgusting, disgusting doctrine that makes no mention of repentance, it makes no mention of sin, it makes no mention of the consequences of dying in sin, eternity apart from God is never mentioned. It's basically get help, uh, self-help, propping up, you know, you can be the best person you can be. It's, you know, motivational speaking. This is not the gospel. This is not the doctrine of God. This is just drivel that these guys are sharing. And what's what's worse is that they give you this false hope that you have the gift of salvation just because you're, quote unquote, a good person. All the while, they're fleecing them out of millions of dollars, like their life savings, people sending all this money to these people. And they're expecting something from a God who didn't send this person to preach this message. Now, now who's at fault? Let me ask you that. Who's at fault when these kind of predators, and I'm going to call them what they are, they prey on people because of their lack of sound doctrine, because of their ignorance of the word, because they're not learned, they're not studied. These people prey on them. Who's to blame? Is it is it is it these wolves or are are the people to blame the Christians who have not spent time in the word? And I always say this. I say once you have the word of God in your heart and it burns bright and unquenchable fire, you will not buy this this garbage from these snake oil salesmen. You will stand on the word of God and what's what's more is you can see them for what they are. Charlatans. You can see them Right. Wolves are going to be wolves. Wolves are going to prey on the sheep. That's in their nature. And this is what these guys are doing. They're preying on the sheep of God. They're preying on. Well, in most cases, I guess the people there, uh, there are some that are actually saved, but they have not studied. So they're easily deceived. Um, This drivel. And and again, um, the message for today is the is uncompromising the truth. And this is going to be part one uncompromising the truth. Let's look at the word compromise. And to compromise is an agreement or a settlement of a dispute that is reached by each side making concessions. A settlement on a dispute reached on each side. Let's focus on that for a second, right? The gospel as it is, is offensive for the simple reason that men don't want this gospel. Men want to live how they want to live. The flesh man, that is. The flesh man wants to do whatever he wants to do, and he loves his sin. He loves it. He loves his darkness. He loves his lifestyles, his alternative lifestyles. He loves all of his uh, all of his anti-Christian behavior. He loves it. And to say something like Jesus Christ is the only way to God, to them is an offense because they've accepted universalism. They've accepted these other false gospels. They've accepted... All of this trash that comes out that's going to, oh, uh, this is going to enlighten you. This is going to this. This is going to that. Again, when poison is laid out for mice, it has to be food. It's like 90% food, 10% deadly poison. And the reason that is, is for it to look appealing to the mouse. That's It's a trap. It's supposed to be appealing It's supposed to look good, smell good, taste good. The mouse eats it, the mouse drops dead. Look at these people, according to scripture, you look at what they're putting out. They're putting out what? Success, they're putting out wealth, they're putting out happiness, they're putting out this, that, this, right? But when you partake of this false doctrine that they're sharing, there's no life in it. They're leading millions of people to hell, right? And let's talk about uncompromising this truth, right? Uncompromising. Now, John chapter 14, verse 5 and 6 says, 
Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Looking at this verse of scripture, that proclamation that came out of the master's mouth that he is the only way, right? At the time, just like now, there, there were so many other old doctrines and gospels and garbage that people were following after for him to proclaim that he is the only way. That in and of itself is an offense. The gospel in and of itself is an offense. We don't have to add to that. It's going to offend people where they are. I remember I, remember I was speaking to someone one time. And they asked me, they said, well, do you think that I'm going to hell? And I said, the only truth I can give you is the truth of the Bible. And this is not my message. This came out of the, the, the mouth of Christ. Anyone who dies without accepting Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior is already, they're, they're separate from God. They will spend eternity in hell. They will die in their own sins. That's the truth. This is not my message. I'm, I'm just delivering to you the truth. That's the only truth that I can give you. And I stand on that truth. And as such, me being a Christian and me adhering to the doctrine of God, if I don't tell you the truth, means I don't love you. I don't want to see you spend eternity apart from God. This is the message of God. You do with it what you want with it now that you have it. And the person just looked at me and they didn't say much. I could tell that they were struggling. There was some kind of internal struggle going on in their life. Just trying to process this controversial message. Again, controversial because it's the truth and the world doesn't want this message. Right? I pray that, again, I don't know what happens to people, how the Lord deals with people. Remember, remember because he, he is alive and he is in his word. So I don't know how the Holy Spirit works on these people after I leave them. But again, ultimately, it's God that does the work. Remember, we just deliver the message as he commanded us to do. Again, going back to the same scripture, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. This is the gospel in its entirety right there. To compromise this message is to preach an entirely different gospel. According to scripture, any gospel that speaks a different message than the one delivered to us in the Bible that is the scriptures, this is a false gospel. So yes, yeah, so all these guys on TV that make no mention of sin, make no mention for the need of repentance, make no message for um, Jesus Christ being the only way, these people are preaching an entirely different gospel and God will deal with them unless they repent. And it's sad because Again, they've become so comfortable in their lifestyle. And a word of scripture is coming to me now is like, woe, woe unto you when men speak well of you, for so did they of the false prophets. You notice that these guys with these big followings, these big television, quote unquote, ministries, these big guys that are, quote unquote, doing these big things for God. And they live these ridiculous lifestyles where they own private jets and such like that. You notice who sits down with them. People are sitting down with these famous TV personalities. They get invited to the White House. They get invited to this. And they sit with all these people. These people that... And they're like, wow, this guy's a great guy, man. He doesn't have anything bad to say about our lifestyle. He's accepting. He's a real Christian. No, he's not a real Christian. Because if he was, he would preach the true gospel of Jesus Christ as it is. You ask these people. that One of the guys was asked on television... The TV personality asked him, well, well, you know, you believe that people, uh, they need Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. But what happens to a person that 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 dies without Christ? And this man said, well, I, you know, I, I really don't know. I don't like to get into that. What I like to do is I just like to uplift people. And, you know, people, uh, I feel they already know what they're doing is bad. I mean, this is like such low lying fruit. Even baby Christians who got saved yesterday will know how to answer this, right? That truly got saved yesterday, they'll know how to answer this. What happens to people who don't, who die without Jesus Christ, they go to hell. They spend eternity apart from God. Again, they have heard the way, right? They never walked the way, they heard the way, they heard his message, and they chose to reject him as the only way. How can they get to God if they've 
intentionally rejected the Christ. They thumb their nose at him. They say, no, well, you know, I don't agree entirely with that. Well, you know, maybe there is another way besides Jesus Christ. I'm sure, you know, these people who are 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 so devoted to these other religions, these other doctrines, or, you know, I'm sure they love they love uh, uh, they love God. So, yeah, I'm sure they're going to get into heaven. This is just lies. This is lies from the devil. Lies from the devil. This is, again, eternity apart from God is such a sad thing because many will stand before the master on the day of judgment in filthy rags and realize that they have rejected the one who could have saved them. Eternity apart from God, cast into outer darkness with his wailing and weeping and gnashing of teeth. That... The amount of regret in that moment, in that in, in eternity that they're going to experience because they've seen the master for who he is as he's judging them. And just knowing that I could have if I only did, if I only if I only opened my heart, if I only listened. That is something horrible that I can't even I, words can't describe. I don't even want to imagine that kind of regret, that kind of pain, that kind of of just absolute misery where you die in the way under the weight of your own sins and there is at that point there is no redemption for them eternity apart from god cast off completely cast away from the master and again when we preach gospel that is not in line with scripture this is what we're doing we can't compromise the integrity of the gospel we cannot compromise what the gospel says we look at, let's use Christ as an example. How many times did he sit down with people, with the Pharisees, and, and how many times did he tell them about themselves? And how many times did he say that he was the way, the truth, and the life, and they were offended by it? Where they ripped their garments and they sought to kill him, right? Right away they wanted to kill him. They were so angry. And, and I mean, there were so many examples of this. They wanted to kill him. What didn't change? I'll tell you what didn't change. The message never changed. He never said, well, you know, I'm sorry to tell you that. Never said that. Well, you know, I don't think, but he never said, well, you know, I don't know. Well, maybe the father will make an exception for you. No, this is the standard of God. This is the way that God sent. This is the way that God provided when he didn't have to. And that way is the Christ. Again, Christ is the physical manifestation of the invisible God. He is God in the flesh. So they've seen God face to face, heard what he had to say and rejected him. And then they were so offended, they ripped their garments and they tried to kill him for the message that he carried. I tell you this because we are no different than the master. He chose us out of the world. The persecution that he and the disciples faced when, when they were alive is the same persecution that we are going to face. Where people, they, what, they talk bad about us, they, they lie about us behind our back, they call us crazy, they call us whatever. But again... What can't change, saints? The, the, the integrity of the gospel of Jesus Christ can't change. The message of the gospel of Jesus Christ can't change. God's standard hasn't changed. When, we have, when God leads us to speak about sin, we we'll speak about lifestyles because the detractors, right away they come to you and they say, well, what about this lifestyle? What about this lifestyle? What about that? Whatever lifestyle that doesn't line up with how God laid out for his children to live, that's against, that's against the ordinances of God. Any lifestyle, and again, these people not knowing God, they love their sin, they love their lifestyle, they love where they are. It's only the Holy Spirit under the doctrine of God, us preaching sound doctrine to them, the actual gospel of Jesus Christ. Again, the Holy Spirit's the one that does the work. The Holy Spirit's the one that continues working after that conversation has ended. And this is just, it for me, it's just very heavy because, again... Um, I know what it's like to be stung by bad teaching. I know what it's like. It's it's just and 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 that moment where after being in complete darkness for so long and then actually experience the experiencing the 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 truth of doctrine, getting right with Christ, knowing what Christ actually said because I opened up the scriptures and I opened up the word. The best way to describe it was coming up for air. Where you imagine having a weight tied around your waist and you're trying to tread water in the middle of an ocean and you get up and you, you know you swim to the top and you and you just get that gulp of fresh air it's life-sustaining and it's just such a relief you can breathe again 
to be set free from the from those rocks and the weights that were that were holding me down. It's just it's indescribable. Again, it's it's just amazing. It's something that only God could have done. As pure as sure as the gospel is pure and true, saints, I tell you, this message is going to always be challenged by those who don't know him. The people blinded by the darkness of these false gospels. And in those moments when we're actually faced with that, when we're sharing the truth of God with them, the gospel of Jesus Christ with these people, that's when we realize how necessary a strong scriptural foundation actually is. Right? We can stand on the, on the scriptures of God. And again, the Holy Spirit brings back to remembrance that which he taught us. We can, we can, we can, again, the Holy Spirit pulls this word out of us and the word starts flowing. Scripture, 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 scripture. Again, line upon line, precept upon precept. Again, full insulation from the attacks of the naysayers, right? And from the enemy. Again, just the word. The Holy Spirit will use his word to defend you in that situation. Again, the Holy Spirit, he's the one that does the work. And again, that word is living and powerful. That word stays with them. That word works on them after this, after our conversation with them is over. This is why we always have to be learned. We always have to be studied because you never know. Again, there are people out there. The detractors, the people who don't believe in Christ. Again, they have studied the word. So they know they, they, they know they don't have. The life from the, the the scriptures. They don't have the the word actually burning in them, but they know enough to try to refute you. This is why you have to know your word. First Peter three fifteen and sixteen. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with with meekness and fear, having a good conscience. That when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. Sanctifying God in your hearts, always ready to give a defense. You're always ready because the word is alive in you, right? You share the reason that you have this hope. Here's the thing, meekness and fear. You don't have to beat them over the head with it. You don't have to get nasty. You don't have to yell at them. The gospel is offensive on its own, right? When they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. Hallelujah. They'll be put to shame. They'll be again, when you're walking in, in Christ, they have no choice but to lie about you, which we're gonna get into the next part. They have no choice but to lie about you. They have no choice but to detract from your character. They have to make things up. They have to just come at you. Because this isn't working. You've done no wrong. All you've done is live according to what the scriptures laid out before. You've you've lived by faith. The just shall live by faith, right? You've lived by faith. You're you're living the word of God, sharing the gospel in love. They're gonna have to lie, but they're gonna have to make something up. They're gonna have to. Amen. Let's move on now, and I'm gonna close it. First Corinthians 1, 18 and 19. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. I love that part. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, right? These people puffed up in their own egos, puffed up in their own intelligence, right? Bring nothing to and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. How many times has God used people who are unlearned, otherwise unlearned, these people that it even... Like, let's say you talk to one of these famous uh, uh, television guys. They'll tell you, oh, well, I went to this seminary and I went to this and I have this degree and I have this. I have more degrees than a thermometer, right? Boasting in themselves the whole time. I have the word of God. I have the word of God revealed to me by the Holy Spirit. I have sat down in my private time with the master of all creation. This is what his word says. This is his standard. And you... According to the same scriptures that you claim to preach on are found to be a liar. You are found to be a charlatan. Repent unless God will deal with you. Repent of what you've been teaching. Repent because you're leading people to hell. And this will be on your head. God will deal with you. Amen. This is the reality of it. Again, not my word. These are the words of God. Any doctrine outside of that doesn't line up with scripture is a false doctrine. It's a false gospel. I don't care who's preaching it. I don't care what platform they're preaching it from. Again, this is the truth and scripture cannot be broken. God bless you all. Until we meet again. Shalom.